welcome to another video from Speed Engineering based in Germany and we are not in our headquarters in Bielefeld but we are in our future workshop in Kastrop uh, the, the workshop is still under construction so it is a little mess but uh, today's topic is unfortunately not this beautiful natural aspirated E uh, E92 sorry M3 but another car which we will see in the next scene okay so today we will talk about the main issue of almost every new BMW car so I think it began from the F series so the car we saw before doesn't have this issue uh, we will talk about I don't know if it's an issue because don't misunderstand me BMW is building really 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 good cars but the problem is the regulation and the restriction of the co2 emission so noise restrictions and co2 regulations both are things we don't like so what do we do um the, the air has no chance to get to the point where we need it so where the intake of the air box is and especially for our um, viewers from the us we know that you are living in heaven when it comes to restrictions about cars uh, in comparison to germany it's it's really a nightmare here we also know that the biggest car community or, or the, the the people who love the car lifestyle are living in california and there you also have those um, limits when it comes to co2 emission and i know that you guys aren't allowed to drive some fancy air boxes and all that stuff correct me if i'm wrong but what do we do? We use the OEM airbox as it's working pretty well, but we just try to figure out how to get a way um, for the air to get into the airbox. And first, we reduce the air temperature. We have measured this product with the Supra, and uh, the result was a reduction of 25% of the air intake temperature, and the pressure is higher. And now let's come to the point why should we have a higher pressure? Everyone is talking about the ram air effect. Now, let's explain it. Let's not go that much into detail because it might be a little bit boring. But if we talk about the basics, you have to imagine that the turbo is sucking the air. And um, right now he is doing a tough job or both of them are doing a tough job. In this case, we have two turbos. So they are sucking in the air. Now let's imagine that they don't have to suck in that high volume. I don't know if sucking is the right word in this case because it might also have a, another meaning. I don't have any other words, so let's stick with this word and don't think about any other things. Um, so let's imagine that the turbo doesn't have to suck in that much, but we are delivering the air to the turbo. This is the ram air effect, means we are using the higher pressure to push the air towards the turbo. Now what happens is the turbo has a, a less hard job, very easily spoken, and it means that we the, the efficiency or the effectivity of the turbo is getting bigger so it has more capacity for for example during higher power by a stage one or two by the ecu so that's the point and we are just optimizing an almost perfect system to be really perfect and now we will show you how we are doing it because it's quite simple and you keep all the oem airbox and it works pretty well and um, at the end of the day we have a colder air intake temperature and a higher pressure to help the turbocharger to do its work. Okay, so this is what I mean. Um, imagine that the bumper is closing up here everything. So we have the headlight and behind the headlight can you see the intake? This is the intake of the airbox. So it's it's hidden quite far away from where we could get some air. And we have the fresh air here and the barrier in between. This is our place to be. I mean, this is the place where we have to attach our REM air kit to get the fresh air redirected to the airbox and to the engine. So here is one part of our warehouse and I'm picking for you now the right products, which is this one, and that one, and this one, and that one. So that's all we need. And very important, the cutting template, as we have to cut a little bit, and some screws and nuts. So that's basically all we need for the kit. 
which we'll install now in our BMW M2 competition. And very important, this kit is only for the BMW M2 competition with the S55 engine. Uh, the BMW without competition, so with the N55 engine, has some other intakes, but we do also have them in the shop. And also for the B58 engine and etc. So almost every BMW engine. And this is, to be honest, the most complicated one. But at the end, you will see that's also still quite simple, I think. Steuern sind in Deutschland interessant. <laughs> das können wir drin lassen, damit die amerikanischen Freunde auch mal merken, wie interessant das hier ist. Okay, back to the topic. Um, what do we do now? We just take off this lip here, which should work easy. Take off the lip. And basically, we need this cutting template. It's very important to put this cutting template on the border of the car on this border here and as soon as it is even just pull it down until you have contact with this lower lower point there is one arrow that is showing to the front and the other one is showing up this is the area where we need to cut and set those two bores to connect now our rem air kit so the first one sits here you just simply pull it over the oem duct i don't want to do it right now because he has to cut first and the second one the second part is here and this is how it looks like at the end and you see that now we have a path to the airbox and have a connection to the fresh air and also little details details like if you see those lashes here they have a little offset this offset is exactly the thickness of the plastic here so that it will all be even and smooth and um, best performance air flow Okay, so we are done with the assembly, almost. Uh, we just have to get the bumper back to the car. Yeah, you see the final RAM air kit. You see the direct connection from the point where the air gets in and to the air box. And the, both parts are now screwed together, so they are also fixed in their position. And you can also see that we try to focus on the designing um, not to cover any surface of the cooler behind. Um, so, because uh, the cooler will lose uh, part of its capacity. So, therefore, um, we designed it to end right here where the cooler starts, as you can see right here. And when we put back in the bumper, um, you will see that there is still enough space to hit the ram air with fresh air. Okay, so let's uh, get the car together and see how it looks like. And I was, uh, I was talking about those small details. Um, you can see here that there is no gap between part one and part two. So it's completely closed, not to lose any pressure of the air. Can you see it? I hope you can see it on the camera. Le <laughs>